welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Danielle and I am the owner of Damn Fancy Creations. If you guys are new to my channel, I do want to let you know that you can catch my content in two other places. I have a large tutorial group on Facebook as well as a smaller, more personal patron group where I offer free files, exclusive discounts, and group challenges each month. If that sounds like something you guys want to check out, I will link both groups in the description below for you. For today's tutorial, I am kind of stepping out of my comfort zone with this one. Um, it is a split cup baseball themed. This one is actually for the lady that we got our dog from. Both of her grandsons play baseball, so her and her daughter wanted cups so they could take them to the games. Um, this one was a really fun tumbler to make. I kind of wanted something different than your typical white tumbler with laces down the side. So one side is white with laces down the side, and then the other side is a completely glittered baseball field. So I thought that was kind of a fun twist on the everyday white baseball tumbler that you guys see just to add a little bit of sparkle to their tumblers. So if you guys are ready to see how I created this fun baseball split tumbler, let's get started. All right guys, so we are going to start with prepped tumblers and then I spray painted them with a flat matte white. I used Rust-Oleum two times. And once these tumblers are completely dry, I am going to divide the cup into two sections with painter's tape. I try to get them pretty even. Um, if you do want your sections to be as even as possible, you do need to take into account the width of the tape. So our white side is already painted and now the field side I am going to spray paint green and apply green glitter. I always try to base paint my tumblers if I'm going to be using a darker color glitter. That way, if any bare spots show through, it will be the color of the glitter and not white. These are the baseball field SVGs I have. I will probably not be linking them because this SVG was terrible. And I am just going to place the field about center of the tumbler that way there's not any weird blank space obviously if you want to put a name or phrase or anything then you can move the field down a little bit this svg took a lot of editing in adobe illustrator just to get this field cut out it had about 50 different layers and it was such a pain which is why i will not be linking it um, I will try to draw one out on my iPad, which is what I should have done originally, but I did not have enough time to do all that. I just wanted something quick, and this is what I get, I guess. So we are applying this field because I am going to spray clear spray over this half of the tumbler and sprinkle green glitter on, um, and I do not want the actual... I guess the field part to be green because I'm going to apply gold glitter to that part. I'm going to go back and glitter the field with gold glitter so it kind of looks like dirt a little bit, but really pretty dirt. <laughs> so I'm just making sure that my field is pretty even on both sides. And then I have the pitcher's mound as well that I'm going to apply to the center. <laughs> While I was making this, I did have to stop a couple times and really think about my colors, like what part was going to be green, what part was gonna be white, what part was gonna be gold. So I did have to go back and check my 
the image of a baseball field several times just to make sure that I was laying down the decals correctly. But so yes, the pitcher's mound does go down. So I am just applying that basically in the center of the field. And we are going to do the same thing with the second tumbler. We are just applying the field. And since this is going to be glittered, if the vinyl wrinkles or it's not absolutely perfect, that's okay because you can always go back and fix it with when we apply the glitter. We just need a little template that is going to resist the green vinyl. And this one, I did move my tape lines over a little bit. It's much easier to move the tape lines than it is to peel up the decal. And yes, you can use transfer tape if you want to. I did not. <laughs> Now we are applying the second pitcher's mound. And this is the one step that I probably would have done differently. I tried to apply the bases and the out of bounds lines or the foul lines or whatever um before i glittered and i was just going to try to peel them up and then the white would show through underneath that did not work as well as i wanted to if i do these tumblers again i will not apply these lines until after i have glittered and epoxied that way i just get a really clean straight white line and I did end up printing two more and applying them after um, glitter but the glitter was just not quite as sharp as I wanted it when I peeled these lines up which you guys will be able to see shortly so we can just ignore this part of the video but after you have your decals on, we are going to take our green spray paint. I am just using oregano. Any green will work. This is just to keep the white base from showing through. If anything shows through, it'll be green, which will match the glitter. So I am just taking these outside and spray painting them green. You definitely do not need to be heavy handed just enough to color the base. So if you guys did not know, you can sprinkle glitter on top of spray paint. So that is what we're going to do here. So I just spray painted this with oregano green spray paint. And I am just going to sprinkle the glitter on top of this paint. Some paints work better than others. Some glitter will work better than others. Sometimes if the spray paint is too heavy, it will soak up the glitter and then take on the color of the spray paint. If I did not use spray paint, I would have just used clear spray. So this is just kind of saving me a step. Just check any bare spots that you may see. And I'm only going to sprinkle this glitter halfway onto the bottom. I do go back at the end and add a baseball to the bottom of the tumbler. But this is just to show a little bit of division. I will go back and spray this bottom a little bit and add some more green. 
but now that our green part of the field is glittered, we are going to peel up the decals and glitter the dirt part of the field. So yes, we are using Mod Podge. I hate Mod Podge, but sometimes I just have to use it. We are using Mimosa for our field, tweezers for peeling up the vinyl, and a small paintbrush. So here is our green field. I did spray seal this with clear Rust-Oleum spray. So everything is dry and sealed. So glitter is not going to be flaking off everywhere. And I'm just using my tweezers to kind of get an edge on the vinyl. And then we are going to slowly peel it up. Um, I do use permanent vinyl. I know several people use um, temporary vinyl, removable vinyl. Some people use contact paper. I just never keep any of that stuff on hand. So I just use what I have. I don't particularly spend money on things that I am not going to use often. So I would rather just have, you know, 15 feet of white vinyl on hand and then use some of that for peekaboos. So now I am peeling up the, basically the pieces that are going to be gold or the dirt sections, which is going to be the pitcher's mound and then the diamond part. So now I am basically just going to apply Mod Podge on all of these sections that are white. And I'm just being careful to not get any of this Mod Podge on the green glitter. And I am working in sections because we all know Mod Podge dries quickly when you don't want it to and doesn't dry quickly when you do want it to. So already I was really liking how this tumbler was turning out. And don't forget your pitcher's mound. And then I was just banging this outside, I believe, because I did not want to mix any green glitter into the gold. So now I was going to go back and touch up little spots when this particular glitter was dry. This 
tumbler I did already. There are still some bare spots, which is one of the reasons why I hate using Mod Podge. So I did do two layers of the mimosa or the gold glitter just because I could see a lot of white through it and I did not, didn't really like that too much. So we are just touching up these lines. You guys can see that I kind of rigged up this um, <laughs> this vinyl piece. This one I think I started to peel off and realize that that is when I should not have applied these lines <laughs> before. But live and learn. That's why I do tutorials so you guys can learn from my mistakes. So I will bang all of this off again, and I'm pretty happy with this coverage. So I will set that aside. Now this one has had a little bit of time to dry. So now I am going to go back and do a second coat of glitter on this one. So now we're finally done with Mod Podging this gold section. So after we sprinkle on the second layer of gold, I let this dry. Then I peeled up the white lines um, that was supposed to be a peekaboo, but I did not like it. 
and I spray sealed really good and then epoxied. Um, and then we will move on to the next step. So here is what the tumbler looked like after I peeled up the lines. I was not happy with it, so I did go back and add more lines, which we will do later. But now I am going to do the dirt part of the tumbler. Um, so I had I've never made a baseball tumbler before. So I just you know I've seen so many people that use dirt. I honestly probably would have just used alcohol inks next time. You can get the same effect with this. Um, it also depends on how you want your dirt spots to look. I just wanted my baseball side to kind of look like a worn baseball. I didn't necessarily want like streaks of mud that some people put on their tumbler. Um, so it really just depends on like what kind of look you are going for. I just wanted a worn used baseball look, which I did accomplish with the dirt, but I probably could have gotten this same effect with alcohol inks. So I'm basically just rubbing mud on there. Obviously, if you don't have alcohol inks, then this will work as well. <laughs> and I do want to point out that even though I epoxied this tumbler, I did go back and spray paint the white side with a flat white paint. I thought that that would hold the dirt a little bit better versus a slick epoxied surface. That is why this side looks matte and the other side looks glossy. And I also am rubbing it on the bottoms as well. The bottom is going to have a design on the bottom, so I wasn't too particular about how it looked, but I did want to have a little bit of the grass and baseball on each side. So here is pretty much what the baseball side is going to look like. So here is the finished version of my tumbler with the laces and the detailing. So I'm going to show you guys how I did that now. So this one is just a plain tumbler. Um, I do really like the look of sharp lines on my tumblers. So that is what I'm going to do for this tumbler. So I just got some nail tape. This one was like a bronzy color, goldy bronze. And I just outlined the field. Since the curve was pretty large, the nail tape did not wrinkle. So I really like the sharpness of the field. I thought it looked really nice. And now I'm going to reapply the white lines that I had before, just because I really wanted them a little bit more sharper than the lines that were already on there. So I am basically just applying this decal directly on top of the white that was already a peekaboo. I'm just matching it up with the same lines. I just really wanted them to be a little bit more sharper than they were. And then I just cut off the excess with my blade. And these are the laces that I got. And when you're applying your laces, you wanna make sure that one set of laces is going down the cup and one set is going up. 
just so it looks like an actual baseball. You don't have to do it that way, but I just, you know, did it that way because that's how real baseballs look. And I am basically just going to apply these laces with the center going right along the split of the tumbler. And I would apply like two, two little lace sections and then peel off a little bit more of the backing, lay down another lace set, peel a little bit more of the backing off because these are kind of flimsy. So I did not want them getting all stuck together. So I just kind of worked in sections, did a little bit at a time. So we're just laying it right along the split, you guys can see. So it really just divides the two sections. And these laces are printed out on printable vinyl and I used my Cameo to cut them. And then when I got to the bottom edge, I did not want the laces wrapping um, down the bottom because I was going to do a design on the bottom. So I just cut them right at the edge. And then once you have them in place, you can make sure that they're pressed down really good. And then we're going to do the opposite side. And these laces are going to be going down the cup since the other laces were going up the cup. And we're going to be doing the same thing. We are just slowly pulling off one or two sections at a time and then laying them flat against the cup. It was very easy to get them twisted, so it is definitely something that you want to work slow at doing. And then again, we're just cutting the last few sections off because I do not want it wrapped underneath the tumbler. And then press down all of the little laces.
All right, so now we're going to outline the green part of the field that surrounds the pitcher's mound. I am using liquid gold. If you guys watch my tutorial, you see me using this very often. And I am just using a teeny tiny brush. Yes, I am just doing this by hand. I am just carefully doing this by hand. Um, I just have never had a problem with doing fine details just by hand without a template. But if you guys would rather do a template, you can definitely make an offset of your little grassy area and apply that. You can use a paint pen if you want to. I actually find it easier to use a brush. But if you have a tiny brush and you work slow, then I bet you'll be able to do it. And you guys can see that I do turn my cup just so I have a better angle on the lines or curves. And even with the circle, I am just turning it, make sure I get a good angle. And there we have it. If you are going to use liquid gold, I do suggest cleaning it out of your brush immediately with alcohol or acetone. It will get really hard. And my dog wants me to come play with her ball with her every time I sit outside. <laughs> she has her herding ball right now that she is obsessed with. So now I'm going to go grab those diamonds that we printed out before. And we are going to apply second base and the pitcher's diamond. Like I said, these were not the best SVGs. I'm not sure that they're actual diamonds. Um, but I will try to make one that's a little bit better for you guys. So this one is finished for now. So I will epoxy these, make sure the other side is shiny, and then we will apply our water slides. So these have both been epoxied. I went around the rim and sanded, so just a little bit of stainless is showing. I also sprayed the bottom with a little spritz of white so that the white baseball would show up well on the bottom and these are the water slides that she wanted she wanted the leopard baseball mom for her daughter and her grandson's names on her tumbler these baseballs i think are something that i just found from freepick.com the baseball mom i did get off etsy and the names and quote I just typed up myself in my silhouette. So for my water slides, I use Sunny Scopia brand and I just wet the backing of the water slides and they release in about 30 seconds. Um, I don't need to submerge them in water or anything like that. So these water slides are going on the white side of my tumbler. So you are going to need a wet paper towel to damp the tumbler. I 
I am just cleaning them with alcohol right now just to make sure that there is no residue or clear spray or anything like that on them. So I just wet my tumbler with my wet paper towel and the backing has released from the image so I know it's ready to apply. And then I just slide on the image. It is that simple. I know a lot of you guys are intimidated by water slide, but it really is super easy to use. Then I will take my microfiber cloth. I will hold the top of my water slide and lightly squish out any water that may be underneath the image. And I do this all the way around my tumbler, just making sure any of that water is squeezed out you definitely do not want to epoxy your tumbler with water still trapped underneath the image so i will just kind of turn my tumbler at an angle just to see if there's any bumps underneath the image and if there are not then i can move on my baseball is ready to apply i'm just going to do the same thing And obviously, if you want your bottom different, you can do it different. I just wanted the white to kind of fade into the green and have a baseball on the bottom. I just thought it was something fun. I try to add things to the bottom of my tumblers. Um, if you guys haven't noticed by now, usually it's leopard print. Uh, this time it was a baseball. So now we are moving on to our second tumbler. and my text is ready to apply. And the reason why you wanna wet your tumbler before you apply your image is in case you need to move it around a little bit, the water underneath the image will help make the water slide slide. And once you have everything arranged how you want it, then you can start to squish out all the water underneath the text. If you do not squish out the water, then once the water dries, there could be air bubbles underneath your slides, which is also something you do not want because you will be able to see that under epoxy. So you do need to make sure that you get all of that water out from underneath your images. And for water slides, you know, I typically let mine sit for about 30, 45 minutes. Some people like to wait overnight. Um, I think that you can kind of feel when they're dry. After you first apply them, they kind of feel a little um, stretchy maybe. But once they are dry, they feel a little bit more hard, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense but you can kind of feel the texture change a little bit. So once my words have all the water squished out from them, I will apply the bottom baseball. And then once all of these slides are dry, I will put them on my turner for the final couple layers of epoxy. I usually always do two layers of epoxy over any decals that I applied.
and that will be it for these tumblers. Um, they did want toppers, which you guys will see in the pictures of my finished tumblers. I did not, did not do a tutorial on them because I wasn't too sure how they were going to go. Um, but they did turn out super cute. So yeah, this is pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. These were my first baseball tumblers that I made and I thought they were super fun. So I hope you guys can draw inspiration from these and come up with your own fun baseball designs. If y'all enjoyed this tutorial or learned something new, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to catch the next video coming up that was picked just for you. As always, if you're looking for more tips, tricks, or tutorials, be sure to check out my tutorial group on Facebook or my patron group. Both are linked in the description. Thanks for watching.